Take a look at President-elect Obama today as he announced Hillary Clinton. He had a little bit of tussle here with a reporter, mild-mannered compared to this, though. Let's watch. You were asked and talked about the qualifications of the you're now your nominee for Secretary of State, and you belittled her travels around the world, uh, equating it to having teas uh, with foreign leaders, and your new White House counsel said that her resume was grossly exaggerated when it came to foreign policy. Look, I, I mean, uh, I think this is fun for the press to try to stir up whatever quotes uh, were generated during the course of the campaign. Uh, uh, no, I understand, uh, and, um, and you're having fun. <laughs> if you look at uh, uh, the uh, the statements that Hillary Clinton and, and uh, I have made uh, outside of the the heat of a campaign, we share a view. Christopher and John, what do you make of his commitment, his renewed commitment today, President-elect Obama, to removing our combat troops from Iraq in 16 months? Christopher. Well, he's been rescued by the Iraqi parliament. I mean, he's probably the luckiest politician one's ever seen since Kennedy in any case, but the real luck is that the Iraqis are demanding roughly what he's been asking for for a long time, which is a deadline and a date certain. The actual right. date doesn't matter once you start talking about that. Can I just add, though, that I thought Obama's answer just there was incredibly cheap and evasive. I mean, he was right the first time to say this woman doesn't, in fact, have any foreign policy experience, and he could have added which also came up in the campaign, that the experience she has claimed, such as in Bosnia, was fake, was fabricated. And he could also have added that um, he, she, like his other nominee for the Attorney Generalship, main qualification in politics is being a friend of Mark Rich, which I don't think is change. Well, why do you no, think do you made this a ridiculous thing to let's, say? Let's, let's, well, how is that a main qualification? Well, you make it sound like he's, he's not, he's not, he's not have, got his head together. Why would he make this appointment the most the profound best known, appointment the best known, so far? The best known decision, the best known, the best known thing Mr. Holder ever did as a government lawyer, shall we, shall we just say, and the biggest intervention in foreign policy made by Mrs. Clinton were both in, uh, to try and get this crook off in exchange for favors we don't even want to think about. Well, we don't know what they I are, doing. I think that's we? a ridiculous thing. It's not a change. Call it, call it what you like. It's not change. It's a Why reminder you, of the more sordid, sordid, elements, sordid elements of the Clinton era, which was not an era of foreign policy trial. What's the sordid or any motive behind this appointment, then, Christopher? I didn't say this is a sordid motivation. Well, what is, what is it? Just, I just think it's very disappointing for those who were hoping for a foreign policy change. But what's the motive behind it? What's the if motive? you wanted to see a foreign policy change, you should have you should, uh, consensual, I suppose. It's party unity, that sort of thing. Uh, probably a, a gesture to now that uh, no doubt is involved and so forth. Nonetheless, it's a terrible missed opportunity. Susan Rice, who would have made a very good appointment, Secretary said, and you'd have known where she stood, a person who's always approached foreign policy as yeah. a matter of principle, who doesn't carry any baggage, who hasn't been a servant of special interests is given a relatively unimportant job. It's, it's a major job, of course. And it's, it's a been major job. That's good. It's well, a major me, job. Uh, Susan's a terrific person. Okay. She's a Hillary, friend Hillary of mine. Hillary Clinton is not qualified in any way to okay. be Secretary of State, and Joan, she doesn't have I think any interest but her self and her husband. Joan, Christopher. did you find it interesting? A couple of decisions the president made were sort of modifying his decision to name Secretary, the name Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State, the Senator from New York. He fenced off the role of UN Ambassador. Uh, Susan Rice now has a reporting relationship directly to him, the, pr the coming president, not to her. Both cabinet and it was the secretaries. Same the What's that about? Right. Why do you think he did that? And why did he give uh, Greg Craig the job as White House counsel where he would be completely fenced off from foreign policy? It seems like he separated, segregated the people who agreed with him in the campaign from those who, from the one he opposed in the campaign, Senator Clinton. I'm not sure I see it exactly that way. It may play out that way, Chris. I mean, let's remember, I believe the U.N. Uh, secretary was a cabinet appointment under, under Clinton. I think he wants to send a message to the world, more important than domestic policy, that this woman speaks for him and that he wants her to play an active role in his administration and in the world. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it as much as separating her from Hillary Clinton. I am sure there were hard feelings during the campaign. I have a lot of mutual friends on both sides. I know Susan. It was, you know, for for Clinton people to leave Hillary Clinton and go with Barack Obama uh, was hard, but I would imagine that if, you know, if Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton can patch this up, I mean, that, you know, pretends great things for democracy yeah. in the world, that these two people can learn to get along. I'm sure Susan and, and Hillary Clinton have already had conversations and that this will be a fine relationship. These you are people Samantha who basically Powers, share um, value. Do you think Samantha uh, Powers has a role? This? 
Samantha yeah, Power she's back. Was... I mean, she's back in the she's back in the transition team, and so Hillary Clinton uh, reportedly signed off on that. I think okay. these, you know, problems are enormous, and we need the best team of people, and that's what's guiding Barack okay. Obama, and that's what I find impressive. Chris, Chris, Christopher, I, I want to go back to your point that this is a political move by Barack Obama naming Senator Clinton to be Secretary of State, apart from foreign policy. He must know, and you all know, certainly Joe knows, and you and I, Christopher, know that we're facing a bad couple of years of economic history coming at us, a couple, maybe a lot more than two bad years. Not just a deep recession, but a prolonged, perhaps something approaching a depression. It could be. Does he need the Democratic Party united to weather that storm? Because he's going to get hit like hell by the conservatives and the Republicans within about three months. Well, whatever the answer to that question may be, it still divides us as, as between those of us who think that a job must be found for Hillary Clinton, that the country would be somehow disgraced if, some, if she wasn't in an important position, and those of us who could do without her. And th neither answer to that question is going to make any difference at all to the way the market performs. But that However, second group is a very small group. Well, it's a group of eccentric it Clinton haters who've made a career out of, out of trashing the Clintons. It's a small group. It's not, a, it's not an important group in American domestic or foreign policy. Which group are you talking and I about? don't think that the group of people who would rather see Hillary Clinton off the world stage, I don't think Barack Obama was thinking about that at all because that group of people is eccentric. They are devoted to looking at, at everything. Everything the Clintons do in the worst possible light, and he's trying to solve problems. And to you, Chris, I don't, I don't think it was done with domestic politics. And I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking to Chris. Well, it's no, tough I mean, here, Christopher. I'm, I'm I did call you Christopher. Million, look, I'm looking at the 18 million people that voted for her, and I'm thinking that if he's looking at Lincoln as a role model, he clearly is looking at bringing in that constituency, not just Senator Clinton or former President Clinton, but the 18 but million Chris, working people that voted for him. I'm just thinking sure. he might be a politician. That's not but a knock. quite honestly, he brought them in. Oh, no, and I, don't, I know you don't mean it as a knock at all, but he brought those people in on November 4th. For all that you and I spent a year talking every week about what was going to happen to those Clinton voters, and even I had some, you know, some weeks where I worried about it, the fact is he brought those people in. He's not worried about that. I genuinely think if he's got an eye toward politics, it's global politics, and he wants the strength yes. of the Clinton okay. name, the Clinton Let's, brand. That's what the, secretary, that's what the secretary of State, that's what the Secretary of State is for, what you want as president right. is to know your Secretary of State spends all her time right. working to make sure that your policies stick. With this woman, that can't be said. She's always thinking first about herself, second about her husband. What about well, her I husband? Trust Before Barack Obama, Obama he's more than always. yours. Chris. Christopher, that, last that, question that's here. Ne that's never changed. That's never changed and it's never going to. So he would not That's have, your opinion. Nor will, any, nor will anyone well guess what? Guess who's saying it? That's a very clever thing to say. Shall I ask would you prefer out of your opinion? What a fatuous <laughs> remark. Christopher, you know, let me ask you, Christopher, I, let's, I, I let's raise this for us. Barack Obama is the supremely qualified person to say opinion matters. Christopher and Joan, I want to ask one objective one objective question which does not have any values attached to it. Will Bill Clinton, with his popularity in South Asia, be brought in as an envoy with regard to Kashmir and the general dispute between Pakistan and India? Christopher, will he be used in that regard, the former president? Some, someone whose main clientele is the Wahhabi royal family of Saudi Arabia who've paid for the people who just blew up Bombay, I don't think would be an ideal mediator, no, but that's just my opinion, as Ms. Walsh would say. Joan? Christopher, you can call me Joan. I've had dinner at your house. That seems condescending to call me Miss Walsh. Uh, you know, Chris, if I'm going to surprise Joan, you If here. I said Joan, you'd have said I was being condescending. Oh, come on. Hardly. Not at all. We've had drinks together. Uh, Chris, I actually I think it's not a great idea to bring President Clinton in right now. I think Barack Obama needs to make some big moves of his own on foreign policy. And I think Secretary of State designates... Uh, Hillary Clinton needs to make some moves of her own. I am of the opinion, I'm not a Clinton hater, I respect the former president. I'd like to see him find a quiet role for himself and let these two new world leaders emerge without his shadow. So I would, if anybody asks my opinion, and it's only my opinion, I would advise against it. Well, I think we've covered every area of concern and happiness about this appointment tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christopher Hitches, for helping me explore all possibilities. And you too, Joan, you it's complement each other in terms of American thought on this appointment. Coming up.